Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.8 and Heat Blur Simulations AJS 37 Vigan Module. Welcome to tutorial 1 in my brand new series, uh, Startup. Today I'm going to demonstrate the standard procedure for starting up the Vigan. There are in fact two different standard ways of doing so. Uh, today we're going to do it using ground power, which is the most common method. You can see that uh, at the side of the aircraft here I've got the necessary ground power units and our crew chief is standing by. Uh, ready for us to start up the aircraft. But first, let's uh, let's drink in the visuals here just a little bit. I think Heat Blur have done a very, very nice job on this module. It continues to be updated to this day. Uh, note the RAT, the Ram Air Turbine, extended on the left-hand side of the fuselage there. Uh, it's normally extended on the ground whenever there is pressure on the, uh, fr the nose gear basically, uh, and it will retract uh, with the landing gear. When we retract the landing gear, the RAT will uh, fold away. So uh, you wouldn't see that normally. There is a switch in the cockpit to manually extend it. It will also extend automatically in the event of uh, main generator failure, uh, giving us access to power. But uh, yeah, this is uh, actually modeled after uh, a real world Vigan, Sierra Echo Delta X-Ray November, an aircraft that I've actually seen in person. Uh, so uh, I thought I would choose this particular livery. You can see here the big after-burning turbofan with its uh, thrust reverser, a very unusual uh, and fairly unique feature uh, for a fighter jet. Another thing to note, AJS uh, in its designation in Swedish stands for Attack Yacht Spanning, uh, which translates to, well, attack is just attack. <laughs> uh, Yacht is fighter and spanning, or spanning, I don't know how you pronounce it exactly, is reconnaissance. Uh, so this version of the aircraft um, it can actually do many, many different roles, uh, but it's primarily ground attack aircraft intended to do a single pass and haul ass, as they say. Uh, it's also capable of air-to-air, -air, although this particular version uh, was less capable at that. There was uh, a JA version of the aircraft, uh, which was dedicated to intercept and air-to-air, uh, -air, uh, and it's also capable of reconnaissance. It has a variety of different electronic intelligence gathering pods that it can carry. Uh, today I've got the, the centerline fuel tank, also called the X-Tank. Uh, I've got two sidewinders, I've got a jammer pod on the right, and I've got a countermeasures counter pod on the left, which just contains chaff and flares. Uh, so that's my little loadout for today. Jumping into the cockpit, we can t see the fantastic detail as always uh, with heat blur. I'm going to hide the pilot so we can see what we're doing. Uh, and if I go ahead and bring up the kneeboard, uh, you'll see that I'm using the kneeboard from Minky182. Big shout out to him. It seems to uh, basically follow real world procedures, so it's well worth using this. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get ready for startup. As I said, we're going to do startup with ground power, so let's speak to the ground crew and request, request ground electrical power. Uh, they'll plug us in. Copy. Ground power is now on. Excellent. We're now plugged in. That's going to give us uh, our electrical power. Uh, it also provides uh, cooling and so on. Uh, now, one thing to note is that absolutely nothing happened when they plugged us in. Uh, that's because there is a master power switch. Uh, which inhibits the supply of power either from the battery or the ground power unit. So the aircraft is still completely dead right now, but that's okay. We're going to look over our left shoulder and we're going to first plug in the data cartridge. Uh, note that um, the data cartridges in the Vigan, you can actually have multiple. So there, there is the one included from the mission editor. You can see I'm currently on data cartridge zero, uh, but you can also have data cartridges as files uh, in, your, in your file system and you can load those. Uh, this this is perfect for multiplayer use. Actually, I wish more module makers would do exactly this and allow you to make your own uh, data cartridges. Uh, but we're just using the one that's included with the mission editor today. So note that you want to look in the ground crew settings section of the kneeboard um, for, in order to change the particular cartridge you're using today. Like I said, I'm going to use the default one. So cartridge is inserted. Uh, main power is now going to get turned on. We're going to zoom down on the left console here. Near the front of the left console, we have main power switch. I'm going to turn that on. 
Master Caution immediately comes on and then all of our electronics come to life. Other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to turn on the low pressure fuel valve. Uh, that opens the fuel valve and means that the aircraft could be started at some point soon. I'm now going to cancel Master Caution. And also my RWR has immediately come to life. Uh, if I look down here, we have the controls for the RWR here. Master mode is off, lights only or lights and sounds. I'm going to flip it to lights only for now. Also, quick, uh, quick Swedish lesson, Fruen, uh, which which is actually just shown as Fran here, but it's actually pronounced Fruen. Uh, that's off. Teal is on. Uh, so throughout the aircraft, you'll see Teal and Fruen, Teal and Fruen. Um, yeah, that's what that stands for. Teal is on. Fruen is off. Back to the kneeboard. Um, yep, we've basically we've turned on low pressure. We've cancelled the master caution. Uh, we're going to do the cockpit light knobs. Uh, Actually, we're not going to use those right now. It's here, uh, belly, belly uh, You've got a setting in here for panel lights in the middle, and the outer one is for the floodlights. We're in daytime, that's not going to do anything. Um, you also want to make sure that your master mode switch here is in BER. Uh, that's for standby. Uh, we're going to leave it in that mode as of just now. Uh, warning lights test. Let's actually uh, bring our view down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. If I bring my view all the way down to here, you'll see we've got a push button here for Contra Lamp uh, lamp Tabla. That's that's basically warning lights test. I'm going to push and hold that, and I want to confirm that my left warning panel is fully lit. My right warning panel is fully lit. All of the random lights all over the place in the cockpit are lit, including the low pressure valve. Uh, and at that stage, we are good. Let's uh, take that that button out. Uh, over my left shoulder, we want to make sure that the the automatic fart control, or AFK, that's the auto throttle, is up. That means it's disengaged. Gear lever is here. It should be down. That's confirmed. Uh, high pressure fuel valve is controlled by the throttle. We rock the throttle out of cutoff and into the first detent. That engages uh, the high pressure fuel valve. That means the system would be ready for an engine start, but we're not going to do an engine start yet. Generator switch, which is found here. We're going to flip it to teal so it's ready to engage once the engine is running. Uh, you then have a bunch of other checks. We're not going to run those just now. Uh, Doppler switch, you want to make sure that it's in the land position. It can be in the mode for over land or over water. This tunes uh, the Doppler navigation system so it works correctly. Uh, thrust reverser, we want to make absolutely sure we don't have the thrust reverser engaged. When it's pulled out like this and has a green light, it's engaged and ready to use. Uh, but there's no hydraulic pressure, so it won't actually do anything right now. We're going to confirm it's pushed in before engine start. We're going to make sure our main ADI is not flagged and operating normally. Looks good to me. Backup ADI, we want to push and hold to uncage. That looks good to me now. And uh, we also want to make sure that the HUD is in the lower position. Let me just reset my camera. Oop. So that's, uh, that's the lower position, that's the higher position. When we're on the ground and when we're getting ready for takeoff, we want it all in the low position. So that's correctly set. Uh, we want the, the slave SI for the HUD, the HUD slave switch to the left for it to be off. Uh, we want the altitude source to be barometric at the current time. Uh, that's this switch here. RHM is for the radar altimeter. LD is for barometric. So we flip that to the right. Uh, we want to make sure that both of our altimeters are zeroed for QFE. This is the main altimeter here. This is the backup. They're both reading zero. That is correct. Uh, we want to make sure that the RWR is set. I actually already did that because it was annoying me. <laughs> uh, next page. External lights as desired. Uh, so for today, all the external lights are here on the right console. Uh, I'm going to set my navigation lights to full. I'm going to set my position lights to on. The other lights will remain uh, off until engine start. Actually, the next thing we're going to do is engine start. So uh, let's go ahead and turn the anti-collision lights on. That will let the ground crew know that they should get out of the way. And there we can see anti-collision uh, rotating beacon top and bottom are on. Position and navigation lights are apparent on the wings here. And those are on. 
Okay, next thing that we're going to do, well actually we could check our magnetic declination, it should be correctly set uh, in the sim, it's this rotary here, uh, we can see that uh, for Syria it should be positive 5.4, uh, to my eye that looks about correct, so let's cover that back up. And then engine start, all we have to do is flip the start switch to the on position and wait. Uh, and the, the checklist here tells us a bunch of stuff that's going to happen. Within 5 seconds we should get start system, within 30 seconds we should get uh, Tansist, which is ignition. Uh, the Oli Strick caution light shouldn't be eliminated after 60 seconds, that's the, the oil warning. Uh, actually I'm wondering, yeah that here it is, that's actually illuminated right now, there's no oil pressure, which is as you would expect. Uh, at idle RPM, the start system and the ignition system should uh, extinguish. Uh, during startup, the EGT should not exceed uh, 400 degrees. This is the EGT gauge here. Uh, engine pressure ratio should stabilize at about 1. This is the engine pressure ratio right now. It's showing 1, but that's because the engine's not turning. This is the RPM gauge here. It's going to stabilize somewhere between 55 and 65. And the nozzle position should be fully open. It's currently fully closed. It'll wind all the way around to here uh, once start is complete. So these are all the things that are going to happen. It's going to happen quite quickly. So let's go ahead and flip the start switch. It's this one here. That's the only thing we have to do. We flip the switch and the entire startup is actually automated. So let's watch. Start system is lit. Within a few seconds we should get the ignition system. It, it's a battery starter for the gas turbine, by the way, and then the gas turbine starter will actually spin the engine. It's spinning the engine now. Ignition. We have ignition now. Oil should go out in just a moment. Oil warning has gone out. Nozzle is full open, and... Uh, the temperature is stabilized at 350. That was a good start. That's exactly what we expected to see. So data cartridge is in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to load uh, the CK-37 computer. Vigan was one of the first aircraft to have a mission computer on board. It's actually one of your main interfaces to the avionics. So uh, we're going to make sure the cartridge is in. We're going to set the data selector to Ref Lola. That's there. We're going to set the input-output mode to input. The display should zero-wise. We're going to enter the code niner zero niner niner. That's confirmed on the screen. And then press the line select key here. Nine will flash while the cartridge is loading into the computer. And then we should get all zeros once that's done. Uh, you'll notice that the bingo fuel uh, counter reset itself. We now have all of our waypoints and all of our uh, avionics parameters loaded. Uh, we can set the input-output back to output and then switch the main mode to actual position and it's now flipping between our lat long. Uh, and that's, that's the computer loaded and running normally. It's a bit noisy out there so we can go ahead and close the canopy. One click of the lever moves it forward and will allow us to close the canopy. Okay, canopy is closed and locked. Uh, we're now going to arm the ejection seat it's this lever that goes over the top of the headrest. Fold that in, and we then have the ejection seat armed. You'll see the warning light for that has gone out. Uh, next page. Oxygen switch. Uh, that's this one here. Flip it up, and you can see it shows teal for on. Warning then went off. Uh, radar altimeter power. It's actually already on. It's uh, this switch here. Radar altimeter is powered. Uh, pitch trim. Uh, I'm actually not going to set that right now. Uh, engine anti-ice. Uh, we're not actually going to be using that today, uh, so we'll leave that alone. Going to do the full control system indicator test. We can push and hold this button. You'll see the stick actually jiggled a little bit because it does a test of the autopilot. You'll see the fuel gauge winds all the way around to the left. You'll see that we have the low altitude warning light come on. That's actually a good test. We can then release that button and that lets us know that the automated control systems are all working correctly. IFF power switch. This is the IFF control panel here. We flip it to the till position and that means our IFF is powered, our transponder is working. Um, I'll do some of the items from the taxi list as well actually because I like to do these uh, before finishing up. 
going to bring my view down a little bit again and you'll see that uh, all the way in here uh, we have our um, sorry actually it's this one here we have our taxi landing light switch it should go all the way forwards for taxi lights uh, master mode switch for our avionics should now go to the nav mode uh, so it's here it's in standby I flip it to nav and that then sets up a bunch of our systems including the heads up display that's now live and uh, at this point, we are basically ready to go. I'm going to ask the ground crew to disconnect ground electrical power. You can see our RWR continuing to flash. Ground power is now off. Okay, ground power is now off. And if we review the right-hand warning console, there are no lights. Left-hand warning console, we only have lights for uh, the X tank. The center tank is bra. Bra means good. So we have a center tank and it's working. And these are our gear indications. So uh, nose gear, left main, right main. Uh, those are all working correctly. Um, so at this stage, we'd be ready to go. Uh, the actual parking brake is down here. We could push that in and that would disengage the parking brakes and we could taxi. So that is it. Aircraft is ready to go at this stage. As I said, the rat will remain extended until we raise the gear. Uh, but apart from that, the aircraft is in a good condition to fly. So there you go. That is how you start up the AGS-37 Vigan. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. And you also have the option of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hack's ground crew for a small monthly fee by pressing the join button below. Big shout out to those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on screen now. Uh, there are some benefits to joining Deep Hack's ground crew. You have access to a Discord server uh, where we can all congregate. Uh, and I'm also looking at doing uh, occasional flying sessions altogether. We've already run one of those so far uh, with more in the works. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.